I'm Bonnie Denton, and I'm going to play for you Etude Number 6 from the Rochu book. Uh, if you are a high school um, euphonium player in the state of Connecticut, this is your audition piece for the C in EA Music Festival. <clears throat> I thought I'd play the piece first, and then I will go back and talk about some of the points that I think might be important for you to consider in your practice and preparation. But first I'll play. this and trying to get inside the head of a, of a high school euphonium player, trying to think of some of the things that would be important, I came up with a list, um, and in no particular order. First off, sort of general style. You got to know how to approach a piece um, in order to play it correctly um, and with the right character. Uh, rhythmic accuracy, incredibly important, especially because as I'm looking at even the first line with the dotted uh, dotted eight sixteenths and triplets and dotted quarter eighths, you got to be able to make sure those are all um, very clear in your mind uh, so that you can so that you can play it correctly. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about grace notes because I know those can sometimes be a little intimidating. Um, I'll talk briefly about uh, the range of the piece and some of the the, the leaps and the, the challenges that, um, that that those that come with all of that. And then lastly, some dynamics and general music, uh, musical expression. So um, for me, when I'm, when I'm trying to make sure that I'm, I'm playing a piece in the correct style, you have to know a little bit about the history. And um, the Rochu book is uh, a staple in the low brass repertoire. So if you are, if you are new to, to this book, welcome. Um, and just so that you know uh, a little bit about it, these etudes were, were not, not actually written by Johannes Rochu. They were written by uh, an Italian tenor named Marco Bordoni. He wrote them for his students um, as, as lyrical studies. They've been adopted by lots and lots of wind instruments. Um, and Rochu compiled, transcribed, and, and compiled these. There are actually three books, um, and they get progressively more difficult. So if you really love this one, and, and this is the first one you've played, seek out the rest of them, play the rest of the book. Um, Rochu himself was a trombone player. Um, I, 
believe he was the principal trombone, I have to remember my history, the principal trombone in the uh, Boston Symphony in the late 1920s, and I think that's when all of these etudes were, were compiled. And he used them as study pieces um, um, for, for lyrical playing. Um, so that's the approach that you should take. Um, as, as connected and singing and in as cantabile a style as, as you as you can, can muster. So if you were to approach this like a Sousa march, that wouldn't work very well. That certainly wouldn't be characteristic of the music. So uh, keep that in mind in your practice. Um, rhythm, I talked a little bit about even that first line. Um, rhythmic accuracy, uh, especially in young musicians, when when you're not exactly sure of how the rhythms work, there tends to be a lot of guesswork um, and a lot of estimating. And pretty soon, some of these rhythms that are actually quite different start to sound kind of the same. So um, I have a different approach uh, in how I think about, about rhythms. The end goal is that I would, uh, I would highly encourage you to be able to move seamlessly back and forth between hearing 16th notes in your head, hearing 8th notes in your head, and hearing triplets in your head. Now, you and I might have been taught similarly that, um, you know, you, you count beats, since we're in 3-4, I'll stay in 3-4, we count beats 1, 2, 3, 1 and 2 and 3 and 1 e and a 2 e and a 3 e and a 4 e and a, and that's great. If that works for you, that's wonderful. You can stick with that. Um, I use a system that I learned in college and it uh, uses syllables um, because mostly, <laughs> well, there are lots of different reasons, but when you get into compound rhythms, then what do you do with triplets? Lots of us just sort of go triplet, 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 and that kind of works, but one e and a two e and a triplet, triplet is tougher for me. So basically, um, a beat is ta, a division of the beat is ta di, if you are in common time. A further division of that beat is takadimi, and then in compound rhythm, it's takida, takida. The beat is still ta, but then eighth notes are takida, takida. So it's very confusing, and I've probably completely lost you at this point. Um, that's okay. Know that. What I'd like you to be able to do is to go back and forth in whatever manner works for you. I would do ta. Ta di ta ka di mi ta ka di mi ta ki da ta ki da ta di ta di ta ka di mi ta di ta ka di mi ta ka di mi ta ki da ta ki da, which is just I in no particular um, way I was just going back and forth between sixteenth notes, triplets, and eighth notes, and I think that's really key in this piece because you get right at the very beginning. It would be very easy to sort of estimate that dotted eight sixteenth incorrectly, so subdivide is important. As you're playing that long note, be ready. It, while you're playing, while you're playing that first um, half note, be thinking sixteenth notes in your head, so that you uh, very clearly play the third beat correctly. <laughs> sure I hit that 16th note and it doesn't get estimated in uh, an improper way. So watch out for that. And it is also important because later on in the piece you get those tied uh, triplets where the third uh, triplet is tied to the first one. So you've got to have triplets running in your head the whole time. <laughs> Keep that in mind and uh, and work towards that in your in your practice. Um, grace notes, I know they can be um, uh, a little intimidating, and I'm going to use a word that sometimes I think maybe gets a little overused, but it is appropriate here. I think the grace notes should be organic. They should be a natural part of the texture. They should sound easy. They should sound like they are not effort at all. Um, I have made the musical decision to place the grace note just before the beat so that the triplet, each time it starts, um, the triplet starts on the beat. Um, I'll give you another example. Uh, um, so that it... Um, yeah, so that the, tri the triplet 
lands on the beat and the grace note doesn't start on the beat so put it just before um, I think my approach I tend to I tend to think of um, just sort of generally very gently touching the grace notes I don't want to slam them I don't want to hit them really hard I don't want to accent them and I don't want them to sound like accents which could happen very easily <laughs> more smooth and much more easy. Imagine you're touching a bubble but you don't want it to, to pop, so just a gentle touch. Um, hopefully that will help you with that approach. Uh, range and leaps. There are a couple times where you're asked to go up to a high, a high A flat. Um, lots of people talk about air and air is obviously incredibly important in how you use your air. But I'm going to give you a, maybe a slightly different approach. Um, what's the well? If you're if you're working on a piece, one of the one of the first things you might one of your first physical reactions when you see high notes is to tense up, right? We see high and we think, oh my gosh, it's going to be hard and I have to work, and you get tense. Um, I would encourage you to do just exactly the opposite. Invite your body to relax. And if you're standing, as I am now, feel your feet and the connection to the ground. If you're sitting, feel your sits bones and the connection to the chair. And invite your body to soften. Send your energy down. That may sound a little cerebral and a little hoodoo voodoo, but stick with me for a minute. Um, that does a couple of things. It makes space. And space is a fantastic thing when you're trying to play high. Because any time that we want to reach higher notes, we really need to open up this cavity um, and spin our air faster. And by relaxing, you are inviting that space to come in. This may not happen right at first. This may be something that, um, that you have to practice a long time. I've been playing 31 years, and this is something I practice every day. So if it doesn't come easy, don't beat yourself up. It's a difficult concept, but I promise that if you stick with it, you will find a little bit of magic there. Um, yeah. Dynamics and general musical expression. There's not a whole lot of guidance on the written page. I have a piano at the very beginning, and I have maybe one more piano later on in the piece. I have a few uh, hairpin dynamics, but other than that, mm, the choices are mine. How I choose to do how I choose to do dynamics. So this is where. Um, uh, a lot of the responsibility is going to fall on you. Um, you have to make musical decisions because uh, the piece should not be um, piano and mezzo piano the entire time, um, especially in an audition. You want to show um, as much as you can your full dynamic range, your full technical range, your full musical range. So go ahead and experiment and play. Um, play some sections louder, play some sections softer. Um, find how you want to express this piece. Um, I, I, I can only, you know, I, I gave you an example at the beginning was uh, that was my interpretation. That doesn't have to be your interpretation. Um, so, and a little bit about, I didn't talk about time. Um, this piece is marked at quarter note equals 60. That's kind of slow at least in my opinion. I was not playing it at 60. I think I was probably somewhere between 75 and 80. And for me, um, I, I, that was my choice. And my reason for making that choice is because I think I can say what I want to say musically more easily at a slightly faster tempo. And I've still maintained the character of the piece, that andante cantabile, which is the, um, the marking at the beginning of the piece. Um, for me, it works a little bit better playing it a little bit faster. It may work for you playing a little bit slower. It may work for you right at 60. Um, but those are the choices that you uh, that you have to make when you're when you're preparing the piece, um, as long as you stay within the character of the piece. So as long as it stays a nice singing style and doesn't get too crazy, because there you you could go too fast very easily, and then I think I think it would uh, it, it would it would lose its character very quickly. So so yeah. I hope this has been helpful. 
Um, I know I've said a whole lot and probably talked more uh, than you were expecting, but um, I hope you have a fun time uh, preparing this piece, working on the piece. Um, above all, make music and have fun. Thanks.